Welcome back to the BDG Fantasy Football YouTube channel. As always, every Wednesday, we are bringing to y'all our rankings for the week. So we've got our top 45 wide receivers. And at a later video today, we will have the same thing for our running backs. So make sure you are subscribed. I've got my good friends, maybe my enemies, Adam and Andrew on the couch. And make sure you are subscribed to both of their YouTube channels as well. They will be linked down below, putting out a lot of content on their stuff, all right? So if you can never get enough fantasy football, we've got more for you, all right? Yes, sir. And as we did last week, we're going to kind of zoom through the top 12 because no one needs to make start decisions there and kind of get to the crux of the dudes where we have uh, larger disparities in the rankings and hopefully make you or help you guys make some sit start decisions. So with our top 12 wide receivers for the week of week four, we've got CeeDee Lamb at the one, Justin Jefferson, Amon Ra, Marvin Harrison, Rashi Rice, Jamar Chase, Nico Collins at seven, Chris Godwin at eight, Malik at nine. You okay? Yeah. Okay, that's just a posture thing when you get over. <laughs> no, I, just, I gotta I gotta let out the big uh the big gas. Got you, know? you, got you. Malik Neighbors at nine, DK at ten, Garrett Wilson at eleven, Devontae Adams at twelve. We'll get into this very, very quickly because you guys do have a pretty wide disparity there. So Andrew, you've got Devontae Adams at sixteen. Not eleven. Yeah. I Adam, have... you've got him at nine. So securely in that wide receiver. One range. You've got him more as a mid wide receiver too. We're going against the Cleveland defense, which is porous. It's I don't want to go. I don't know if I want to go that far because obviously they've got a lot of talent, but they're pretty banged up, and the offensive uh, front they've got going on is not doing the defense any favors right now. So right. anything like striking as to why you have him really high or why you have him really low that we that we want to talk about? I mean, I'll just say this: like if you're the Browns and you're playing the Giants, it should be pretty clear and obvious that the offense, although he's a 20 year old kid, is going to run through him like neighbors. He's wide spaking open on a second touchdown. I know that Adams should be the person they're featuring as far as like defensive attention, but I have zero faith in this Browns team to stop him. And I think this is a guy that's going to get a ton of targets. And you just look at last week, he a lot of in, in, like not good targets this, this week. I'm not saying the targets like going to be great, but they're going to be a lot better versus Cleveland, I think. So I'm, I'm just kind of trusting the volume in the matchup. I would say for me, it's really just coming down to quarterback play. The quarterback play hasn't been good in Las Vegas. Uh, there was already conversations of potentially making a QB switch in Las Vegas, which they are not going to be doing here this week. But if I'm a Devontae Adams owner, I would rather die than have Aiden O'Connell be out 100%. there. 100%. I agree. Minshew's Minshew Minshew a million times better for Adams. I as agree. A fantasy I agree. And he's better just as a football player, too. But, but that being said, that – Kind of tells you how the Raiders have been performing to start the year is if they're already having conversations of quarterback switch, that's just kind of how they've been doing it. Uh, I, I think with me, it's Adams. He's going to have boom and bust types of weeks. It's going to be hard to judge when those come. I, I do think that Cleveland's secondary is probably the best part of their defense. I don't know. I just can't trust Adams that much this week more than just a wide receiver, too. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty ugly game, it feels like. For sure. It's, I, very, it's a very low-scoring game, I, too. I think I, it's the lowest game total of the weekend. Like Andrew said, that's the lowest scoring game of the week. The over-under is 37 and a half. I would not wish going to that game, having tickets to that game upon my worst enemies. But you could choose literally any other game to go to on SeatGeek because they got all the tickets available no matter what sport you're looking at. Obviously, it's football season, but you can get 10% off with your purchase no matter what the sport is using BDGE10 when you check out, all right? I'm going to be going to a couple Falcons games this year. We are going collectively in the office to the Texas and Georgia game later in October. We'll absolutely be using Using that promo code when we do everyone's waiting they're like yeah i'll go to a game later i'll go october november december why are you waiting you're just going to keep putting it off and never actually buy the tickets do something good for your future self all right right after this video head over to seat geek use the link down below go purchase tickets for you and your homies you and your family whoever it is that you want to bring to the game and you will be happy when game day comes around that you've got the tickets purchased you're forcing yourself to go to a game all right you're doing something good for your future self Go check out SeatGeek. Go download the SeatGeek app. Use code BDGE10 for 10% off your purchase, no matter how many times you use the code. But it's only available for a limited time, so make sure that you do it rapidly. All right, BG10, 10% off your tickets. Yeah. I also sense. don't know if there's anyone, like, I, I like Ward, but I don't think anyone's covering Adams one-on-one -on -one when he's at his peak, like, right now. He's, he's Is he at his peak right now? I mean, he still is. He, I think he just has terrible quarterback play, personally. But Maybe. We will find out. Yes, and we will. if uh, it's anything like last week, I'm going to be way off. Just like Jamar Chase. Yeah, Jamar Chase. That was uh <laughs> good take. Dub wide receiver ten. Dub. Not your best work. You know, so, shit happens. It does. There was, I'm sure there are a lot of other Just to me it happens were off. On the <laughs> I think we spent Listen. we spent like fifteen minutes arguing uh Jaden Reed and Xavier Worthy and the answer was ni uh, neither of them. Mm -hmm. So it didn't really matter. Uh, all right, let's keep moving. Brandon Ayuk, wide receiver thirteen, Alave, wide receiver fourteen, Mike Evans down at fifteen, Amari Cooper at sixteen after a little bounce back. And then we've got DJ Moore at seventeen. So 
Adam, you've got him at 20. Andrew, you've got him at 15. I think we can probably have a more holistic conversation about the Chicago Bears wide receivers as a whole. We had a Rome breakout last week uh, against Indianapolis. This was a game that Caleb threw the ball 52 times. Obviously abnormal. We're not going to see another 50 50 pass attempt game out of him most likely throughout the rest of the year. Uh, You know, it was good to see the Rome breakout. Keenan, I feel like he's dealing with the same injury that he was last year. I don't know when or if we're going to see him in the first half of the season this year. I haven't heard anything positive out of it. Yeah, he's like not really practicing. There's no, there's not a lot of good vibes out there. So I think we we can move forward as if, you know, it's more we're going to be without Keenan season. for the next, let's say, you know, two, three, four weeks, whatever. So that does leave the target tree a little bit more condensed. Cole Komet got a lot more involved last week. He's, he's starting to run, you know, the majority of the routes at the tight end position Thank over Gerald God. Everett. Um, so I guess my question is like DJ Moore, he ended up like kind of getting it done last week because he caught that, you know, that, like, Hail Mary play on the sideline. Kind of crazy, actually. Yeah, I mean, we've got DJ Moore at 17. We've got Rome all the way down at 32. This is a great matchup against, you know, the Rams Rams. here. So we could see them build on that success as a team, as a passing offense, et cetera. Why, I mean, one, why the major gap? Do we feel like we're kind of holding on to DJ Moore still a little bit too much, maybe? Well, I am at 20. Um, I'll say for me, like, I have right now Rome at 29 and DJ Mm -hmm. Moore at 20. If Keenan Allen is officially going to be out, I will be moving Rome into my top 24. Really? Okay. Yeah. I think I think this matchup is hard to ask for more, and I just think that not DJ Moore. Yeah. I'm, Rome. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I think that, honestly, the chemistry that I saw from them last week is going to continue to build, and especially if Keenan's out, like that target floor. I think the thing with Rome is he's not going to be getting that uh, number one attention, and that is really big for his upside, I personally believe. Yeah, so you have them nine spots uh, apart, but you, yeah, you have them uh, pretty wide between 15 and 34. Yeah. You got some fucking explaining to do, buddy. I mean, for me, really, it's just that when they're on the football field together so far, it has been DJ Moore as the first read, clear cut every time. Uh, he has 28 targets through the three games, so the volume is there. Mm-hmm. That's everything we want to see uh, as far as the usage goes. Uh, obviously, you know, we haven't had the big play, he hasn't found the end zone. Uh, I guess we've had the big play, but we haven't found the end zone. Mm -hmm. I feel like with the type of volume that he's been receiving, the matchup this week against Los Angeles, who has been giving up a lot of points to wide receivers, and uh, just the upcoming schedule, still pretty light for the the Chicago Bears here. I I just think better days are coming here for DJ Moore. This week, I think, is the start of where it kind of gets back on track, and I'm just relying on the volume here that he's been receiving and just hoping that the production follows suit. Yeah, It's kind of been the Amari Cooper thing over the last couple weeks, right? The volume was there, volume was there, and then the production came. I think that's the same thing with DJ Moore. Yeah, I think that's probably a good take. I think I I feel comfortable about having DJ Moore in my lineup. Yeah, I mean, there's no, like, there's no way. I have him at 20. I mean, you could, I think you can kind of nitpick between him, Drake London, uh, Jaden Reed, Tyreek Hill types. But I think the reality is if you have DJ Moore, you should not be sitting him unless your team is absolutely goaded. Yeah, let me ask you guys, what, um, what, what is your confidence level that this passing offense in Chicago, like, figures it out? At some point this year. And, and by that, I mean, like, I'll say, sure, Caleb put up numbers last week, a lot of volume, whatever. It doesn't make me feel more confident about the passing game. Like, what happened last week doesn't feel, like, predictive or something that they can necessarily, like, build on because it was sloppy getting there. Is there a point you get to and you're like, yeah, I feel good about the Chicago passing offense? I mean, listen, it's not been great. It's The it, the Bears have been kind of woated on offense. But the, the second half, I thought, actually took a step forward for the offense. I, I do think... The second half of that game, I started to see some things click. I think, dude, you got a guy like Rome who's taking a ton of snaps as a rookie. You got Caleb who's a rookie. You got a whole new offensive change of philosophy. Like, there's a lot of moving parts that are new there. I'm not going to act like I'm super confident this offense is going to figure it out overnight, just click. But I I think some of the growing pains are reasonable to expect. But um, if they can build on the second half, I I think it could be a lot better. I kind of have the same sentiment there. I I feel like last week – looked better than what we've seen. It, it did feel like there was a little bit of a progression for Caleb Williams last week. The first half, though, was horrible. Like, literally, if you watch the first half of Caleb and Anthony Richardson in that game, you wanted to puke. It was horrible. You know Anthony Richardson leads the NFL in interceptions right now? Yes, he's six. six. Anthony Richardson is making me sick He's more than stomach. Levis. He's right more now than is trying to play himself out of a job. Yeah, yeah. and a rich man. Yeah, but uh, I do think he took some positive steps forward. I think the offense is going to continue to figure it out. You know what's going to make it even better if eventually Shane Waldron gives up play calling duties to somebody else. Yeah, it probably won't happen this year. Probably They're going to have to clean house this offseason and, and go somewhere else. Yeah. Let me ask you, okay. Ben Johnson's going to be great in Chicago. Dub. Better or worse, Caleb Williams finishes as the quarterback. Let's say, let's put the mark at 16. Better or worse? Worse. This week? 
season. Worse mm. season. Better. Okay. So top 15. DJ Moore, wide receiver, 18. Better or worse? I was hoping you would say 20 because I felt comfortable with 20. Uh, 18, I'm going to say worse. lower. Yeah, I'm going to say worse. Lower. I would probably agree. Rome, wide receiver, 25. Lower. Better. Mm, big dynasty energy over here. Big dynasty energy. Yeah. I mean, Rome, Rome. I mean, coming off the big game, he's got to be like probably top I mean, 25 now because of the one game. I, I he sh- found I the end have, zone. I should have yeah. the Rome jersey on. Damn, I, I misplayed this. He, Andrew's got DK rank higher than me. Oh, um, so, Wait, speaking of, so you won the Saquon bet. It was he wouldn't have a play over sixty yards. What what do I get you a Saquon Kelly Green jersey or a jersey of your choice? Well, I don't remember what hopefully it was. it's I think it was a jersey of our choice. I actually didn't bring I was gonna get I was already gonna have the Saquon lined up for you today. But uh I think we go jersey of my choice, make it a little interesting. So you're getting a Watson jersey or what? <laughs> well, if I have a of my choice it will not be Watson. It probably won't be a Brown, period. Right. You just you just hit me with that link. I tell you, you know what? I like that. I, and so we never clarified um, how many times can this bet pay out? Mm, one time. This is a one time. So if he does it again, it's, it's a one time offer. Yeah, yeah, no. If he does it again, just know that I'm getting like the pain comes in multiplications in my Twitter mentions. I like, don't the, don't worry. Like the outside, I, I'm not are actually making worried about it. that. I do believe that you have that pain, but I think the link pain is a little bit different. You know, link pain hits different for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one time redeemable coupon. Fair enough. All the all these stipulations, man. But okay, well, hold on. If you want to do it that way, if you want to say how many times is this redeemable, then we would start the bet over again. So starting you double, now. do you want to double or nothing? Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, why not? Like from this point forward, he will not have another sixty yard play. Okay, so double or nothing. I it like doesn't this. feel good to do that. Can I, I, tell, like can I tell you the truth? Yeah. There's no way that as much as I do, I'm, I love the link, and if I have to get you one back, that'll be just fine, but there's no way I take back down from that challenge. I Great. Mean, are you kidding? Great. Love so it. two jerseys or no jerseys now, right? Yes. Right. Or 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 it's just two jerseys, jerseys either way. All around, yeah. It's either two for him or one and one. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, because. There's no, there's yeah, no losers there here. There's no, no losers except you. Yeah, I don't get a jersey. I'm still waiting on my Sam Darnold one from China. He's got, he's got, he's got the sweatshirt <laughs> on. Shipping takes a long time. For It'll that. be here in February, maybe. All right, let's keep moving down. On a so we've talked about the Chicago wide receivers. We've got Drake London at 18. Let's talk a little bit about the Miami wide receivers. So you guys have a seven-spot discrepancy. Adam, you still got them up at 15. Andrew, you're a little bit more conservative down at 22. Jalen Waddell is off the fucking hemisphere. Where is he? Is he I, not in your guys' top 45? I got rid of him. No, nah, he's... I, no, Jalen Waddle. I have him at 39. He has okay, him at you're right. I didn't see that. He's down at 39. You guys are, are both basically in that spot. They play Tennessee, who, again, they're a good defense personnel-wise. Levis and that offense is like ruining what the defense could be. Mm-hmm. Now, the quarterback situation in Miami is some of the worst, you know, play of football I've seen in quite a while. Skylar Thompson was terrible. He ended up getting hurt. Uh, Tim Boyle came in. He's just as bad, if not worse. I would probably at this point put money that Snoop Huntley ends up being the quarterback for them this week. That's what I've heard out of camp so far. He just got onto the team. I still worry about like how motion heavy and how like tricky that offense probably is to pick up in that time span. So I'm a little bit worried overall about the offense right now. Uh, Snoop Huntley, I also don't think is like that good of a quarterback at all. I, I he's okay. I'll tell you what though, if if Tyler Hundley is the starting quarterback or is announced as the starting quarterback, I will move these guys up a little bit. Okay, I, I'm already kind of think assuming that it's going to be him. Um, I think Miami should be making calls to try to patchwork whatever is going on. But would love to see Russell Wilson. I think in that, this offense. I think that one is. Listen, there's something going on there. I'm not going to derail the conversation, but he can't be happy right now just sitting. And that's Fields' job. They're three and zero. Yeah. Yep. But like I'll say this, I, I think the, the reason problem I, with the problem with that. Sorry to interrupt. I thought we were about to have another one fall. Russ's I contract. Bell, I would assume. I feel like something with the contract might be shot there. It's like there's one, no way Pittsburgh gives that up if they're only paying him a million bucks. They're like we have a backup QB in case Fields goes down. Sure. We're three and zero right now. Yeah. Yeah. But there's always a price. Sure. There's so, a price that Miami's not going to be willing to pay after just paying Tua. I mean, maybe, but like. There, it, it, it's going to come in the form of draft capital, not money for them, probably. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying, like, that's a lot to invest into the QB position. Also, right? let's sure. be honest. It's either that or punt the season, maybe. Buffalo but. looks like a goddamn powerhouse in there right They're now. so good. Sure. Right I mean, well, anyway, though, like to the Tyreek point, I know this is going to be a broken record and completely wrong from last week, but I think if you're McDaniel, you have to find a way to get, even if it's gimmicky, you got to find a way to get the ball to Tyreek Hill. And I'm just not going to panic overly panic I guess from last week I think yeah. that's where I have him at 15 for that I, reason I think not over panicking on Tyreek is probably the right way to look at the situation that being said though Mike Daniel like when everything is working it looks elite 
he's a very fragile coach though. Like when he faces adversity, he cannot overcome it. Like yeah. when they're down big, he has a lot of problems. When like the defense gets to pin their ears back and just rush the QB and put pressure, they can't get it done. When teams take away their gimmicky shit, he can't really move the ball. Like we saw that last week. It was right. horrible. I it was just, like it was a, I mean, was, even with like Tua, when they're like playing against Buffalo and sure. Buffalo gets up two touchdowns, they cannot compete. It looks it looks like a little bit of a broken offense when everything is not going. Uh, perfect. I just feel like for me, when it comes to, you know, this Miami offense right now, I don't know if there's a single player that I feel confident in. Even last week, like we, we're not talking about running backs right now, but A-Chan didn't look great in the way that the offense went. And so I, I just feel like for me, yes, you could call me more of the pessimistic approach and maybe you're a little bit more of the optimistic approach with Miami. But I just feel like if I'm picking between like a Drake London type and Tyree Kill, Give me Drake London. If I'm picking between Amari Cooper and Tyreek Hill, give me Amari Cooper, Mike Evans. Oh. Like, give me those guys because I know that the offense is going to at least be halfway competent. Maybe not Cleveland, but for the most say. part, those offenses should be good. And those guys are still getting the volume that Tyreek is going to get from a guy like Skylar Thompson, Tim Boyle, whatever it may be. We want to I'm shake your to, hand. I'm just glad to see you come around with Amari Cooper. It's a good feeling, you know? Yeah, I mean, we got him, what, 17 now? 16, 17, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, uh, it's I, I think there's a... Tyreek is safely out of the tier that he used to be in, and he's kind of in a jumbled mess of, I think, like seven to eight receivers. So in the I, I had this question kind of hit up the Discord earlier, and I, I don't know if we want to talk too deeply about it, but what are we doing with Tyreek now? Like, is he a guy that we're trying to sell, or are we just holding through this madness? What are you going to do? I mean, like, I, I feel like personally, if you're selling him, you are getting lowballed to such a degree that it just doesn't make sense. I personally. kind of agree with that. Like, I'm, I'm not going to sell him for, like, even, you know, you're not going to get a guy in the same tier. You're going to have to sell him for like a Jamison Williams, maybe, or some shit like that. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. No if you can you. get, if you can get Stefan Diggs, rest of the way, are you going Stefan Diggs or Tyreek? Tyreek. I'm all, I'm going to take Tyreek. Diggs had I a agree. great game, but I, think I, I, I also agree. think like it's going to be a little more feast and feast. Yeah, like Diggs I, looks good. Yeah, no, Diggs. He did. Diggs I'm not, no hate, he's no. been performing fine from a fantasy yeah. perspective. He, like the numbers are there. I don't. It, the way he's getting it done doesn't really inspire a ton of confidence to me. I almost feel like Tyreek, even in this next four game span, will probably see as many targets as Diggs will, and oh. I feel more confident that he'll. Do we feel confident to us back in four weeks? No, I not think I think it's a waste of a, a waste of breath to try to figure Fair out the enough. situation. To be yeah. honest with you, I've been doing Facts. this too long that like those types of conversations only end in cold takes. There's Fair. never a good take that comes out when we talk about that shit. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's keep on moving. What about Deontay, my friend? I mean, you got him at twenty though. Yes, sir. Come I, on. I just think Come look, on. That's uh, the biggest spot difference we yes, have. Sir. Ten differences. Did we want to talk about anybody above, or are we just skipping no, over No, let's the... just fucking zoom right down there. We got Jaden Reed, Zay Flowers, Stephon Diggs at 22, Pickens at 23, T. Higgins, Staines at 24, J-Mo at 25 to start the third tier, and Deontay Johnson. Big spot difference here. Adam, you've got him at 30. Andrew, you've got him at 20. Ten spot difference. He's coming off a massive game with the Red Rifle coming back and looking like a damn all-pro quarterback. They've got a wonderful matchup against the Cincinnati Bengals, and they will be without Adam Thielen for at least the next four games. So this feels like, on paper, an absolute smash spot for Deontay Johnson. And to be honest with you, I can't really think of a reason why it wouldn't be. You're doing my job for me right now. I mean, what, really, what they you pay just, me the big bucks for. Like I said, or I guess you like you said, Cincinnati's defense of books. has not been good. Um, you know, they have the Cameron Taylor Britt hot takes every week that happen to hit media headlines, but whatever. Goat. Uh, that being said, Deontay, 14 targets last week, 122 yards, a touchdown. Like you said, he's also going to be the number one without Adam Thielen here. To be honest with you, I'm, I'm less interested. I think everyone's in on Deontay at this point or likes the matchup. I'm, I'm more interested on why you're you not. see him as like a mid-wide receiver three. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I think, well, first of all, it's not like, let me just, he, he's wide receiver 30. So it's not like I'm saying don't play the guy. He's just outside of, you know, he's in the range of, I think, low end wide receiver two. I mean, wide, wide receiver, receiver 30, three. though, you're you're going to be sitting him for players. Like, sure, when you like, start to factor I, I mean, the running backs. Like in. Rashid Shahid, uh, JSN. It's not like I'm sitting him for duds, really, right? You, so you would play Rashid Shahid over Deontay Johnson this week. That feels crazy to me. I mean, that's fine. Uh, Deontay Johnson had a great target load. I, I think, actually, right now, the, the matchup is obviously Swiss cheese, but I, I think with Thielen being out, I. I'm not sure that you can just completely focus on Deontay, but I think, one, this is going to be – we're going to look back, and that was a great game for Andy Dalton relative to his entire season. Probably. 
Uh, that will also potentially be one of the best games Deontay has for the entire season. So, like, I'm not going to get overly carried away. I think he's a, it's a good matchup. I, I think I'm reflecting that at wide receiver 30. I, I think there's definitely a case to be made that he's not going to have that type of target volume again um, and that the defense is going to be focusing on Deontay. Make someone else beat you. I guess my only argument would be that is what they brought him in here to do is be the number one, the target volume kind of guy. And I, I don't even feel like last week's, you know, eight catches for a buck 20. That doesn't even feel like that's like crazy. Like that feels like I mean, that's, it's a great game, I obviously. Mean, so like I right. wouldn't bank him there, but that doesn't feel like it's crazy. That's a good game. That's it's a, a good game. A I'm not saying game. it's a bad game. My, only, my thing is like Cincinnati, their defense is so bad. Like you're yeah. talking about like what Terry just did to them. And I almost feel like Deontay's situation with their with their offense, the offense coordinator, I guess, I have more confidence in him being able to do that against Cincinnati's terrible defense than I do, you know, Terry kind of exploding yesterday. So I'm way closer to Andrew's rank with Deontay Johnson. I feel like you should be pretty confident throwing him into your lineup as a, as a really solid wide receiver too. There you have it. Uh, no need for me to discuss. Let's keep moving down. We got JSN, Juwan Jennings, Rashid Shahid. Uh, we got a five spot difference there. You know, it's it's not really that big of a difference, I guess, when you get down to this part of the field. He's obviously coming off yeah. of his worst game playing against Atlanta. We have a pretty good defense. Uh, we're really good against the run. Our secondary obviously has a lot of big names. AJ Terrell's a very good cornerback. Simmons. Um, yeah, Simmons is good, but he's not like someone you're like. I'm not playing my wide receivers because Justin Simmons is a right. safety for the team. A, um, Jesse Bates is obviously great. We don't really have a cornerback two that's very good, which is. Why I think Shahid could warrant a good ranking this week is I'm assuming AJ Terrell is going to see a lot of Chris Olave. And sure, if we see things kind of bounce back in the favor of, you know, Derek Carr, this offense and, and Shahid, he could be someone that kind of, um, you know, benefits from that. I agree. And, and one thing that's positive about Shahid last week, which even though he did give you the donut, you know, it, it wasn't anything for our fantasy football teams he didn't see a dip in target share like he still saw the same right. amount of volume he also had like two balls like hit his that, hands in the yeah, end zone yeah he dropped like, in the end zone yeah. like they they're still there i think that's going to be the shahid experience is you get the big play some week and then other weeks you don't that's just the way it is it also looked like the uh saints offense as a whole kind of hit a a rut sure so I, we'll I, see what happens this week my my ranking at uh, receiver 27 is I, I think the way you have to play Shahid and guys of I'm not gonna act like there's a bunch of guys like this but he he in general if you have him and you're buying in this is a boomer bust play yeah yep. you can't sit him you, you can't, can't try you to can't, like play if you try to do this Gabe Davis thing where you pick the weeks you are going to literally put him in your lineup at the Wotes and yeah. sit him during the great performances the reason I have him at 27 is almost like leaning into you, you got to play him. You just play him right. every week. You it's easy, to, it's easy to like throw him all the way down the rankings after a bad week, but then it's like then you're more likely to sit him during his good yeah. weeks, which makes a lot of sense. And I, I don't think my ranking – I'm not punishing him for what he did last week. I just – I think he's a wide receiver three. I, I throw him in as my wide receiver three. So if you're in a two-wide you know, two mm -hmm. receiver league, that's your flex play. That's the way that I view this guy, and, and that should be that pretty much every single week. Yep. So we've got Tank Dell at 30, BTJ at 31. Rome, we've already kind of talked about. You guys have a uh, five-spot difference there at 32. Yeah. Terry at 33. Shakir, Christian Kirk, Calvin Ridley round out tier number four here. As we get into the last 10 guys. Shout out Khalil Shakir. They're all, <laughs> shout out Khalil Shakir for that Dubs. unbelievable comeback for you. Michael Pittman Jr., Xavier Worthy, Jalen Waddell, D-Hop, Jerry Judy, Lad McConkie, Cortland Sutton, Christian Watson, Jacoby Myers. Anyone that we want to touch on, let's, I, let's I guess, talk about the Green Bay wide receivers. Okay, I, I want to have a conversation, too, about – Pittman. Okay. Um, we have to. So we have to. <laughs> the Green Bay Packers will very likely get Jordan Love back yep. this week, which gives me a lot more confidence in this receiving room, obviously. You guys have Jaden Reed up I have 19. at... 19. We have him at 20 consensus. 20 consensus. I'll uh, be moving Watson up, up a little from my 47 if it's confirmed to Love. Yeah, I, w I would... Uh, I would Put it at like 85 to 90 that he plays. My, my ranking right now is reflective of like we're not sure because I think he in particular is someone if, with with Malik and Love is a big difference for me. Huge difference. Where would you put – where would you guys start to put him if Watson plays – or if uh, Love plays? Um, well, for me, actually, I am going with the assumption that Jordan Love is in, so I'm comfortable with my 41. I would be around that range. I think I'd probably put him just behind or around like Pittman, honestly. Would you play him over Pittman? Uh – I think Honestly, I would. I think I would because one, the matchup with Pittsburgh doesn't inspire a lot of fantasy upside, mm -hmm. and two, don't make me pick that. Like uh, I think right now, Pittman needs to show me something before I'm picking in this range in general. I'm probably going to swing for the upside play because there's not a lot of floor. It's Wat. It's Watson over Pittman. Pittman it is a guy that I am. I am definitely looking to find ways to bench. 
Yeah, easily. Like last week, I had a, uh, a sit start conundrum where I got lucky and picked the right player. It was like I, I played Rome over <clears throat> Pittman and Jalen Waddell, which was like a tough call, right? They're all kind of in the same tier. But I was looking at Pittman and I'm like, man, people are like, oh, he gets the volume. It's like, he gets like seven, eight targets that are all four yards away from the line of scrimmage. Like, he is They're never the downfield guy. Yeah, like he's never getting those deep shots. And that was kind of my concern the first couple of weeks. I'm like, okay, when Josh Downs is back, does Pittman start running deeper routes? And it's like, he's got a few more, I guess. But like, it, it's it's not clicking there in India. He's not the guy that they're I looking for down I guess I'm there. just a little bit confused on what happened because I feel like last year it was a small sample size and obviously that's you know a dangerous game in itself but I feel like when Pittman was with Richardson last year he was working downfield wasn't he Not in really. those games Not, he didn't work downfield a t- he was more of a possession receiver mm-hmm. there was sometimes he worked downfield but that was not primary. did he just was take a couple long ones to the he house? had a bunch of screens that went to the house yeah he was a lot of screens a lot of slants like that kind of stuff so yeah maybe the numbers yeah, just kind of disguised yeah when you're happened, when you're not but. getting enough volume like that type of player is uh just not really it's almost like Garrett Wilson right now and He's, and like Mike, Michael Pittman's like a really bad version of the, Garrett Wilson the thing about Pittman too is I like, have Garrett at 12 and I feel like I'm way too high yeah I will say I will say that for both of you guys like Garrett Wilson I don't think could be a wide receiver one right now especially against Pat Sertan you'd have a lave over Garrett Wilson yeah yeah would you put him like down towards the London range yeah yeah really yeah 17 18 range I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't hate it. I certainly get it. I, I think though he nah, hasn't. Cracked. I'm not, I'm not cooling on the on the situation as much as I think most people are. I, I think the volume's still coming. I think that he's due for a game with Rodgers. Obviously, Sertan's a bad matchup, but like, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm still trusting in the low end wide receiver one, high end wide receiver two range for Garrett Wilson. At this yeah, situation. I mean, like every defense has the same game plan. It's just like take Wilson out, and Rodgers is starting to build up a little bit of chemistry with like Lazard and Tyler Conklin, and they run the ball so much to the point where it's like. In the same way that they're not really, like, taking shots to Pittman, they're not really taking shots to Garrett Wilson either. Like, no. on I mean, slants every play, like, sure. But sure. outside of that, it's like he his, his targets are not very valuable. He hasn't the top 24 yet this year. Garrett Wilson hasn't? Hasn't. Right. right. So that, it's like That's more reason for me to keep him high, though. Like, I guess. The volume is The volume is eventually going to win out, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's the that's the hope. I, I hope mean, so. I, he's, but he's, but he's, there's, he, different, there's difference between just, like, Volume and like volume that matters. Yeah, but like getting isn't, nine isn't targets. Cooper, a prime example of that last year or last week. I mean, sorry. Uh, I mean, I wasn't following Cooper's targets because I don't really watch Cleveland, but I watched Garrett Wilson and he gets seven targets a game that are all five yards away from the line of scrimmage. So it's yeah. like cool to make a blanket statement like, oh, he's getting targets. He's got but- eleven, nine, and six. I feel like yeah. seven is actually a little bit low. I think right now, if you tell me what's his a dot, uh, tell me that, that number. I now. mean, I. I would be lying if I told you I knew that off the top. Well, I, I thought you were looking at his stats. He's just is looking it on a sleeper. sleeper. I don't sleeper know. doesn't tell you ADOT. Okay. I can pull it up, though. I, I'm, I'm curious what his ADOT is. profiler would probably give you that, right? Yeah. yeah. I just feel like, too, you know, it's the same argument. We kind of made the argument for DJ Moore, but again, like you said, Nick, like it feels like DJ Moore is working downfield more than a guy like Garrett Wilson is. But I, I don't know, man. I, I have him here at 12. It just feels it feels risky. His ADOT's 9.2. Sub ten is like slot receiver, tight end type of usage. Which and he's got he's got one single deep target on the year, which is twenty plus yards down the field. That's like kind of my concern. Obviously, you know they could just chuck a couple to him, but against Sertan, I feel like this is one of the matchups that that probably won't come. So I'm just trying to be like more practical and realistic here. Again, you're probably not benching him, but there's there's a world where like you know you took. Rashi round four, Malik round five, like some of these guys where you're like trying to decide between Garrett Wilson maybe being yeah. your lineup. And in, in that instance, like I don't feel great about him. I, I will I say you. I recorded this video on my channel. And when I said it out loud for the first time, like Garrett Wilson, my wide receiver 12 on the week, I even once I said it out loud, I said to the video that probably needs to come down because I don't feel comfortable with him as my wide receiver one. This week. I mean, I'm just looking at guys in the same range, right? You, you're telling me for sure. Are you over Wilson right now? No. No. I'm just saying I, I could make – I also wouldn't I be make, this high on Ayuk, I don't think, either. I have him at 14. I, yeah. I'm just saying I, I, I think 11. you could probably make the case for Wilson over most people after yeah. round 12. I, you know what? I guess, I guess looking at it more so, it's it's just like the tier drop-off feels kind of significant here. And I where think, it's like Wilson I don't feel good about, but like I guess I don't, I don't feel super strongly about any of the guys underneath him th- going over him. I will say, Correct. though, like if you, if you want to do the argument of Ayuk and Wilson – Ayuk had 10 targets last week, and he was working downfield, and he's dropped a couple in the end zone. Like, 
it's there. It's Jawan's it's you, you, team, brother. Ayuk looks a little lost, man. Ayuk looks weird, and I know you like know everyone what? just keeps making the Dude. same like, oh, he takes he's gonna take a couple weeks from like training camp. I'm like, get your shit together. It's the fucking fourth week, buddy. You're a professional athlete. <laughs> Sweet like, fucking well, that was what I was yeah. about to say right now. I was gonna say he didn't go to training world. camp. I know you because you're you just you just you gotta have original thoughts here. Like I at some love, point, just grow up. I'm a Brandon Ayuk apologist. All right. Yes. Sorry. That's actually true, for sure. Sorry. Yeah, let's get into some deep cuts before we leave you, actually. Dudes that are ranked outside of the top 45 that we think you can start in your lineup. And I think we have players on the same team. I ended up just doubling down on it, Andrew. I yeah, I tried to claim it uh, early, but I'm going to go with Greg Dortch for the Arizona Cardinals. I think he's a pretty good play here this week. The over-under in that game is 50 and a half. They play against the Washington Commanders. They currently are 32nd against wide receivers, so dead last. That means you should be targeting wide receivers against the commanders and one thing to just kind of put the cherry on top there's a pretty decent chance that there's no trey mcbride in this game and if mcbride is not playing greg dorch is going to work across the middle underneath and he should soak up a lot of targets there potentially for a lot of receptions in those half ppr ppr type of leagues you could get a lot of points from greg dorch yeah so i actually took another receiver from that same room the better receiver the superior mm. the receiver the elite receiver of michael wilstein all right, Michael Wilson coming off a huge game. Nine targets, eight catches. Uh, say, I don't remember the something. statistic. It was something good. It was something that you could have used in your PPR lineup. And again, my biggest pull is obviously the matchup is fantastic. But Trey McBride, probably on the wrong side of the concussion protocol. So I think he misses that game. McBride's a dude who does work over the middle, but he also works on the outside. He is a possession outside, outside type of receiver. And I think Michael Wilson fills that hole really, really well too. So I think I would rank it Wilson than Dorch, but I do think they're both in for good matchups target opportunities should be increased. And I think either of them are guys that you can throw into your flex if you really need a guy. Yeah. One of the, one or both of these guys are probably good flex plays if you need them in a pinch. I would go Dorch over Wilson. Yeah, I'll take. That's why you have a couch. I ain't, shaking, <laughs> I ain't shaking your nasty hand. All right, Adam, what are you doing? Um, if you get down here, I mean, there's not a lot of safety, right? You're, you're shooting your shot on something that could end up misfiring. The whole New England offense is seeming like a misfire a lot of times, but I think Pop Douglas down here is someone that I'm um, willing to play around with. Demario Douglas, Pop Douglas. Tar target volume is actually there, and he's. I don't think he has, like, crazy high uh, ceiling because he gets a lot of um, – over the middle type targets, but I think I think honestly, if you're if you're really in a pinch, Bob Douglas offers a lot of upside that is similar in this wide receiver fifty range. Yeah, I'm just worried about that offense with all their offensive linemen being dead. I agree, San Fran. But, but that's why, like, actually to that point though, I think Pop Douglas is someone you get the ball out quick to, and is going to end up getting a lot of uh, safety valve type targets. Sure. Worked last week against the Jets. Pop, Hi. as we said, subscribe to the channel because <laughs> running back version of this video is coming out later today. Love you, smokies. Bye. <laughs>